Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. We like to talk a lot about this person. And I think the wrestling podcast industry likes to talk about this person a lot. Tony Khan is, you know, the, the, he invigorated wrestling discussion like nobody's business just by existing, not only for creating AEW with uh, the Bucks and Kenny and Cody, but also because of just being different uh, than, than WWE. He is not the same alpha male machismo guy as Vince McMahon would purport on TV. He is uh, a son of a very successful owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So there's a little bit of like that nepotism stuff that's always going to hang around him. And honestly, the reason why AEW exists is not because of this great creative mind that Tony Khan has. Like I, I would actually say for my style of wrestling, uh, there's lots of different bookers that I actually enjoy their arcs and stories and stuff more, more than Tony's. But the reason why I believe he's successful is I, th I think he just has great networking ability. He's because of who his pops is. He's been in places that maybe other people can't be in. But look, you know, the guy has been promoting the idea of Mr. David Zaslov, who a lot of the Hollywood community right now are just, you know, if, if we did a Hollywood podcast, David Zaslav would be in the thumbs down for like <laughs> every week just because yeah. of what he's done to WBD. But Tony Khan has put him over constantly. That That is the one consistency is WBD. I love WBD. Mr. Zaslav just putting this guy over, trying to make this deal with this company. And I think we're pretty close. I would actually be surprised if this announcement did not come within the next week or so. Uh, my friend, BJ Bethel, who I just did a podcast with, where we where we kind of modeled it after uh, the old sports reporter show that was on Sunday mornings on ESPN. We called it the Wrestling Repotters. We, we, I was talking to him, and you know he's really the only one who's gone on record with a story and a tweet to say that this deal is done in principle. And he's standing by it. We haven't had anything that ha that has said that he's wrong, except for the fact that Tony has said, you know, that report is premature. But he did not say it was absolutely wrong. So uh, I think this thing is going to be done pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, sooner than later. And the numbers that I've heard, I think people are a little kind of mind boggled. They're like, how is it higher than, you know, than this or than X? And I think the thing that we have to understand is, you know, WWE goes into these deals and, and their goal is to split their deals with different companies because you don't want to put all of your eggs in, in one basket. Uh, USA now gets SmackDown, but SmackDown is only two hours every week. So you're, so you're getting two hours of WWE TV. Raw goes to Netflix. Raw is three hours. So you get three hours of Raw for Netflix. And then the CW gets their two hours. So it's not like whatever network WWE's working with gets seven hours of TV. Mm -hmm. For someone like WBD, who just lost the NBA, all of the content on AEW is valuable in a, a, a lot of the industry term is like tonnage. And it's like the idea that you have these seven hours spread out over these, these different days and you don't have to worry about putting anything else in those slots. So that's consistent for the next five years. These hours are going to be taken up. Now we just got to worry about the other hours uh, of because, you know, wrestling is weekly. It's not like um, it's not like hockey, which runs, you know, for over half the year. It's not like um, college, uh, college basketball, which is a, a shorter amount of time. March Madness is, is a month. So the with the value in AEW is in the seven hours every week that they just don't have to worry about putting anything else up against. And I don't know if you've looked at a lot of the, I think, I think Dave Meltzer today said it's like there's 125 shows rated like that. Like the list of shows on television throughout a day could be like upwards of 300, but 
he said 125 get rated. And even we we look at something like Rampage, we go, gosh, nobody watches that show. <laughs> and some of these networks would be so happy to have a Rampage to be in the, the top or, or, or whatever it is, you know, every night, uh, every Friday night. And so for our eyes, because we followed the Monday Night War, we knew what WCW versus WWF was, and we knew what those numbers were, and we knew we would hear our friends who don't watch wrestling talk about wrestling. We're like, okay, that's hot. And nobody outside of the hardcores watches uh, Rampage. But those hardcores are actually meaningful to uh, to the television uh, networks because of the idea that it's either Rampage or we're putting some rerun of some show um, that we've run a hundred times, or we're putting in something that would even rate actually less than, than rampage. So rampage, I, I'm not sticking up for rampage. I don't watch it. I don't like it, but this is behind the idea for the folks who just don't understand how rampage is even on television. That that's why. So Tony has found his own little relationship to where maybe his content is actually more valuable to WBD than it would be to another network, or even if you split it off to, to different networks. So I think that's may pay off for him. And I didn't really understand the strategy until recently, until I saw kind of how they were making this work. So that that's, that's one thing for, for the thumbs up. The second thing, and this is a little different. I think some people would actually think that this, is not great it was announced today that next year's all in is going to be in august it is going to be in texas outdoor uh actually glo i think uh where the rangers play yeah it's I not think the that, that has a roof Dallas. i think yeah. you, can, you can put that has a roof so it's not going to be like super hot outdoors mm -hmm. but so i think some people go oh can't run wembley three years in a row Got to got to tuck your tail and, and take that show elsewhere. And I think there's there's something to that. Like, yeah, like, unfortunately, you know, he probably can't. He, they came in so hot last year that their attendance is going to drop like 40 percent. And yet it's still going to be probably close to 50,000 people. And I think some people would like to swing that as a negative. I don't think it's a negative. It shows that, yeah, like, you know, this kind of thing. Unless you're WrestleMania, uh, but even WWE doesn't run the same stadium every year for WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. They move that thing around. And so now they decided they're going to run uh, in, in the U.S. And then maybe they go back to Wembley in, in two years. I think there was a, a certain discipline there that he needed to show. We know that he loves these traditions. He still does all of these <laughs> Chicago shows, yeah. you know, in, in the fall because this is how he's done it. And so I think this is a good idea. Everything, I always say this, everything is an, an experiment. If, if they can do 20,000, 25,000 next year in Texas, or maybe they heat up and they can do more, you go back to Wembley. Like you're trying to figure out mm -hmm. your fan base here a little bit. So I thought that was smart. Some people are going to disagree and say that, you know, he's tucking his tail and, and running. I don't agree with that mentality, but it sounds like there's going to be some other uh, uh, other announcements. They're supposedly running a show in, in Australia as well. So, you know, they've got eyes on international business as well as trying to make their product special. Mm -hmm. And now my hope is if we get this TV deal locked in, which I believe is is coming. um maybe we can you know figure this dynamite show out because <laughs> it you know the, the, it, it's so up and down with how people think about it like last night uh for last night's show i was getting a lot of different kind of feedback like i was like oh you know lots of video packages which is good for promotion and then i had some people go that was a great episode of television and i was like great i don't know if i'd say great mm -mm. And, you know, there were fundamental things that were wrong with that show, which we're, we're going to talk about here in a second. But, uh, but, you know, it's like this style of TV show was the opposite of what the audience wanted like three or four years ago. Like any time AEW would run a video package, somebody would say, oh, they're trying to be like WWE. We don't want to see WWE. We'd watch Raw if that happened. And now they've had to adjust. And it's like, OK, we're build. We had a build for this pay-per-view. 
And you know what? Our audience is probably a little bit more like WWE than it was back in the day. So yeah, so things are changing, but I, I just really would love for them to be able to, to slow down a little bit and tell these stories in, in a way that makes a little bit more sense to me. Uh, and we'll talk about some of the frustrations that I had with the stories that they told on Dynamite that a lot of people love. And I'm not going to dismiss their love for, for what they saw, but that is my thumbs up. Tony Khan, I think he deserves a lot of kudos here because I also I also think, you know, some of these pro wrestling, these really bright minds of the past. Like, can you imagine Jim Cornette constantly sucking up to David Zaslav. It just wouldn't happen. Like, he'd get so tired with Zaslav, and he'd just be like, "I, I don't want to be on your network anymore. You're taking too long." You know, I'm, I'm moving to the local television in in you know this area. So it's just you know, there's a, there's there is a strength to him in in being able to have the patience to do this deal, which should be a great deal for their company. Yeah, I mean, on the Texas uh, uh, Stadium show where the Rangers play. Um, I like the idea of changing it up because, you know, there's a lot of fans that couldn't travel to Wembley Stadium last year or even this year, right? And now it's closer. So I, I think they're going to do well. I think they're going to do really good next year. Even if their creative is not the best, I think just to be just to go to the a stadium show in the United States for AEW, I think people want to do that. So I think they'll be successful there. And I like the fact that they should, they should change it up different areas um, because – that's what WWE, you know, I mean, I'll say WWE does that in a smart way. Like, they know, like, they can't just burn out a city. You know, they're not going to do that. And uh, I know they're going to have double shows and stuff like that. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I like it's a good move. So and we'll see. The TV deal is a good deal. And, hey, wrestling is going to be sticking around for guys can use it for leverage, for contracts and more work for people. We're all good. I mean, I know people think, oh, John LaRocca, you just hate it. <laughs> just... I just get frustrated as a creative. And it's very frustrating right now. So. You know, it's can... funny. I, I've made this joke with a couple other people. Hmm. The podcasters who, the, you know, the fuel to their show is dismissing Tony Khan or making fun of Tony Khan or talking negatively about Tony Khan. And the other one is Meltzer. You know, oh, we're going to talk about how Meltzer lies and this and that. You take Tony Khan and Big Dave away from today's wrestling landscape. How many podcasts do you have? Like 10? <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. Yeah. 